Hey everyone, today we have a bit of a unique build for you. Not only are we going to do an Intel Arc build, but it's all ASRock. Motherboard and GPUs. And guess who's going to help me build it, even though he's camera shy? Randy. So, like I said in the intro, we are doing an all ASRock Intel Arc GPU build. We're using the ASRock H510 Pro BTC Plus riserless motherboard as the base, and we have five of the Challenger ITX Arc A380s, two, three, four, five, and then I have this one extra here. This is the ASRock Phantom Gaming A770. That'll give us six GPUs on this one motherboard. And Rondi's been gracious enough to give us one of his first power supplies. Can you go grab that power supply? Yeah, he's donated a power supply. All we had to do was fix one of the power connectors on it, but this is like one of his first ones he ever had. And the reason why you'll see in a minute is because this motherboard, even though it has resizable bar that we need for the Intel Arc, it's got a weird connector. It's using Molex for four of the GPU slots. Weird, but safe in the application that we're gonna be doing. That power supply actually has enough. I was gonna run it on a ZSX, but that only has a single Molex. So he's donating that to the cause. Thank you, Rondi. So my man Rondi is going to unbox the motherboard right now for us. I have already pulled this out, tested it for power, updated the BIOS because there's a BIOS revision that we needed that actually enabled clever access memory, which is just their way of saying resizable bar on this motherboard. We needed to be able to enable that for this to work. I've also put a G6400T CPU that I got used off of eBay for $20 and then just a general um, stock Intel CPU fan. Also, Rondi's also given me a bunch of M.2 SATA drives in the past. So we're using one of those, a 16 gig or a 32 gig one for MMPOS to run on this unit today. Unfortunately, Hive OS is taking its good old freaking time getting their kernels updated. So we're stuck with MMPOS. And for RAM, I had an extra stick of DDR for 2666 server memory. It's ECC. The board's not running ECC, but it works perfectly fine. So we got 16 gigs of RAM on this board. Now, as he gets it out of this foam protector that ASRock put it in here, we'll see these four Molex connectors that I was talking about. Go ahead and put it down. There we go. Um, one, two, three, and four. Now, the way this board is laid out is a little different. You'll notice this says B, C, D, and E. And you'll see right here on the connector somewhere, if I flip on over, here's E, D, C, and B. All the way up top here, these first two connectors are on A, which if I come back around the side here, A is over on this 24 pin connector. There's three of them on this board. This one is your primary power supply. This one, secondary and tertiary, is just to turn on extra ATX PSUs if you're using it. So these first two slots get power from this. The rest of these slots get individual power from each Molex connector. It's weird, but it works. So give us a few seconds. We're gonna get the power supply all rigged up on here and get this started up in MMPOS just by itself, no GPUs. This way we can verify it's still working perfectly fine. Okay, so we got it all powered up. Rondi got us a screen and a keyboard and we're in the BIOS right now. So hopefully we can see this says it's UEFI version H510 Pro BTC Plus P1.5. Hopefully you can read that, but that's the BIOS that I'm currently running on right now. If we go down to chipset configuration, hit enter on there, you'll see here primary graphics adapter auto. Once we put a card in there, we're going to leave it on auto, above 4G decoding enabled, and here's the thing you really got to turn on, CAM, clever access memory. Make sure that's enabled as well. Now that we know this unit is up and working, let's uh, populate it with some cards.
And here it is right before we turn it on. You got five ARC A380s. These are ITX single fan edition, $120 brand new, at least when I purchased them. Single A pin, five of them, plus then you got the ARC A770. That's got two A pins. This is being powered through the 24 pin um, motherboard, plus the first one is being powered through the motherboard. These four are going through Molex. Thankfully, this power supply that Rondi donated has a single string for each Molex. So that's a safety feature because everyone knows we don't normally like Molex in mining. These are usually only rated for like 55 to 60 watts. Thankfully, when you're mining with these cards, the total power draw on Dynex, which is what we're going to be testing on in a few minutes, 50 watts per card at 2.2 kilohash. Half the wattage through the PCIe pin, the other half wattage. So basically 25 to 30 watts only through the Molex. So we are safe in this condition. Go ahead, Rondi, give us some juice. Let's see what it does. There we go. We've got power up. All five fans running here. That one's definitely lit up. And it's complaining that it doesn't have a monitor plugged into it. Give me one second. So before we power this on all the way and go over to MMPOS and see if everything shows up, I want to show you a little trick. In the older BIOS, you used to be able to mess with some settings and get it so it will boot without a monitor connected. This is what it does when you don't have a monitor connected right now. So power on. You get five beeps and now it's not going to boot. It will not go to the hard drive and boot up whatever operating system you have. It is stuck because there's no monitor connected to it. So I went into the BIOS. Ronnie, can you shut off the power supply for me? I went into the BIOS and switched the uh, primary VGA adapter to on board. So thankfully, Ronnie had one of these sitting around from the 3060 Nerf days. It's one of those dummy HDMI plugs. So we're going to plug this into the onboard HDMI because I want to be able to run this headless, not with a monitor connected all the time. Once we plug that in, turn the power back on and it will boot up with no post beeps and we will go on over to the computer and check out MMPOS. Okay, so we are logged into Ronnie's computer here on MMPOS. Uh, this will not be a tutorial for MMPOS today. It's definitely way different than HiveOS. But you can see in slot zero, we got the ARC A770. Then we got five A380s. Finally, with the Intel Pentium Gold G6400T. Not doing anything with the CPU today. I already have the flight sheet set up. We're going to be running SRB Miner version 229, I believe. That's the latest version. We're going to be mining Dynex. Ronnie, can you scroll back up to the top, please? And all the way over, just hit that play button. Yep, exactly. Enable Miner. We're going to switch from Miner to Disable soon, and it's going to start up, and we'll see what happens here in a few minutes. Okay, we got all six cards working on MMPOS. We are getting 14.42 kilohash for the whole rig at 344 software watts. So if we come on over to the rig itself, we can see all six cards have their fans spinning. And actual power usage for the whole rig, 445 watts. Now, Rondi pulled up a great metric to actually compare. We're going to compare the Intel's at 445 watts divided by the kilohash gives us 31.78 watts per kilohash on Dynex for that whole rig. That's the average. Now, my Octo 2 rig, which has a single 6600 XT, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6700 XTs, and a 6800 non-XT, that is running 15.67 kilohash. At 614 watts, this metric is correct because it's in an octaminer. That comes out with an average 39.18 watts per kilohash. The Intels, and we haven't even done any tuning because we can't really, because the Intel drivers still suck, is more efficient than my AMD rig, my 6000 series rig. Figure that one out. Okay, so that's basically it for part one of this video series. Um, 
We want to get everything bench test, make sure it runs, get some numbers for it, figure out how it's going. So finally, 445 watts. All the cars are running about 40 C because we tested it with the meter here since we can't see the temperatures for them in MMPOS. The drivers just don't allow it. And we're getting 14.2 kilohash out of this whole rig. And it's more efficient than AMD 6000 series. So make sure you're subscribed because we're going to do a part two because I am not doing open air cases anymore. Octominer has kind of spoiled me, but unfortunately you can't use these in Octominers because they don't support resizable bar. So me and Rhonda are going to have to cobble together some sort of style case that we can have fans going through it. Stay tuned because Rhonda's going to pull something out of his hat. Take it easy, bro.